Well, yes, Palantir got into another partnership once again. It seems like they get into a new contract, a deal, or a partnership every other week. It is impressive. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to talk about the news about around Palantir and the newest deals they have gotten into lately. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing and smashing that like button since it really helps the channel out. Also, I have a completely free Discord group chat which link for that is down in the description below if you would like to join and discuss with us about different investments. Last week, I did a small overview of the company, what they do, what they focus on, and many, many more. Today, we will compare the bear and bullish statements plus talk about the deals and partnership that might help the stock get over $40 once again, or even higher. We know that Palantir has a unique software offering that provides a long-term competitive advantage, right? They are expanding slowly and steady, adding more contracts, both commercially and governmental. First, let's talk about the beer statement. There is an article from Seeking Alpha which explains three different reasons why to avoid Palantir. And there is another one from Forbes talking about two reasons to avoid Palantir. First, Seeking Alpha talks about long sales cycle and the lack of escapability options that are limiting upside, explaining that their business model is that a sales cycle could last from a couple of months to over a year depending on a customer, which prevents the company from easily scaling its solutions. They also mentioned that there is a shortage of key components and automotives, which is something we are going to talk about later on the video as they just got into a partnership that might help with that. Reason number two was shareholder unfriendliness, as bullish investors talk about how good of a company Palantir is, but don't talk about the things that are preventing the stock from appreciating. For example, stock-based compensation. As you can see here, they certainly had a loss of $123 million for quarter 1, 2021, but they had $193.7 million in total, total stock-based compensation between cost of revenue, sales and marketing, research and development and general initiative. So it is certainly affecting us as investors for now, but it is not hindering the growth and expansion of the company. And those compensations will stop, in my opinion, when the projects start becoming profitable. But yes, they are definitely deluding us shareholders right now. Reason number three from the Seeking Alpha article is their valuation as it has a market cap of about 47, right now it's $50 billion priced like a high margin SaaS or SaaS company, even though it does not operate like one. But they also mentioned in this article that in the end, the company could become an interesting long-term play only when the stock declines lower most of the options are exercised and insiders ease the selling pressure until then Pantil remain an unattractive stock that's unlikely to significantly appreciate from the current levels and that's what they are avoiding it so in my opinion they don't like it because of that but they actually like the company just not the valuation then on the article of the two reasons to avoid Palantir from Forbes the first one is their cash burn as according to them Palantir's product is very expensive to sell and have high overhead costs and they fear that Palantir may never be profitable then the second reason is governance structure and then we have the bullish statements such as Pantier, the path to a $1 trillion valuation company. First, because they have a dominant mode in its US government business, which many don't like as, may, as many say that if they lose any of those contracts, they could be done. But uh, the thing is that they have been expanding and expanding this government contracts. As we saw last week, we talked about the contract that they renewed with the CDC for disease monitoring and outbreak response. We also saw a $111 million contract with the US Special Operations Command to basically continue serving as an enterprise data management and AI-enabled mission command platform, and also saw Palantir expands a Space Force partnership with a new $33 million contract in May. So certainly they are expanding and adding new government contracts. Yes, most of their contracts are from the government, but they're actually doing very nice with that. 
There are just some of the most recent ones. Plus, Pantheon is investing a lot of money in reviving fundraise growth engines and also just got into a partnership that could help with the commercial growth. So what is it all about the new partnership that could help them a lot in the future? Palantir Data Robot partner to bring speed and agility to demand forecasting models. The speed in which supply chains, consumer demand, and shipping changed over the past year has forced organizations to rethink their approach when it comes to demand forecasting for the future. Palantir and Data Robot partner to create a custom newly developed framework. This partnership will give customers the ability or commercial customers the ability to create and test data driven even easily updated for casting models in minutes, not months, from a single platform. This has never been seen before, as now they will combine their data analytics with the AI technology from Data Robot all together, all into one platform, which will be a great use for their commercial businesses. So basically, Palantir is addressing a specific needs that exist in the commercial business world right now. I do think this is excellent for Palantir, as now we might see a growth in commercial business, which is currently lacking, and we already talked about that. And this is what might help Pantier accelerate their growth and with time propel their share or their stock price back to $40 per share or even higher in the long term. I understand what bears say about Pantier and their focus on government contracts, but also understand that they have been able to continue expanding those contracts, providing excellent service and, excellent, and exactly what the government is looking for. Plus. They are finding ways to grow their commercial segment of their company as well, which with time will help them accelerate growth and become a profitable company. Now, Palantir is up today 2.17% at the time I'm filming this video, and it is trading at $27.36 per share with a market cap of a little over $50 billion. The company has continued reporting a nice growth year over year and quarter over quarter, and that is no secret, and they are not expecting that to stop, as they are expecting to have a CAGR or compound annual growth rate of about 30%, while analysts are expecting 25 and they're expecting, analysts are expecting also for Palantir to report a revenue of $3.4 billion by 2024. And if they're able to maintain that growth, they might get to $12 billion by 2030, which would be a nice growth year over year. Many say that they will accelerate that growth with time, but still a 25 to 30% growth year over year is actually nice for such company. It could help them or the stock price to double, triple, or even quadruple their price in the long term. And even with such an excellent balance sheet that they have, $2.34 billion in total cash and a small debt of $452 million with an excellent credit ratio of 3.88, which means that they have more than enough cash to continue investing in their company to be able to continue seeing such an excellent growth in both their commercial and government segments. I do know that they should ease their stock-based compensation and management should ease their selling pressure, but overall, I like the company. I see a nice potential in it. As always, this is not financial advice just for entertainment purposes as you should desire to invest in what you like this is just my research on this company as I always say you should always think what you are looking for in a stock are you investing long term or just swing trading the stock what is your risk tolerance what would you do if the if you invest today at $27 and the stock drops to 15 would you panic sell or invest more or hold into it that is something very important to think about before investing in any stock as not everyone has the same risk tolerance. I know that when I decide to invest in a stock it's for the long term and in case it drops if I have cash available I will average down or just hold it as stocks fluctuate. Obviously as long as fundamentals have not changed and I think I have demonstrated that in my videos and my investments just like I did with cruise line stocks when they dropped and with Wish and Fubo when they dropped earlier this year and any of the other stock picks that I have in my portfolio. I think that I've shown that and I hope that you have get my point. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please smash that like button and subscribe since it really helps the channel out. Thank you and see you next time.